It is a privilege to be here this morning. If you have your Bibles, as Frank Silvazio says, if you have a good thing, amen, just keep it handy this morning. We're going to be flipping to, to several different spots this morning. But I, I'll meet you first in Matthew chapter number 11. Matthew the 11th chapter this morning. Very familiar portion of scripture. It, it, even for the non-Bible reader, they've heard this these verses before. But it is very familiar to, to the Bible reader. Amen. Matthew chapter 11. I'll give you what the Lord has laid on my heart for this morning. Matthew 11 and verse 28. Your Bible should read like this. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Thank God that I can come to him and he give me rest today. Amen. Amen. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. Let's pray our Father. Lord, in Jesus' name, we, we come boldly to the throne of grace this morning. Lord, and we're, we're a needy people. Lord, I need you this morning. I ask you, Lord, that you'd forgive me of my sin and myself. And God, that you would just help me to be a blessing through the word of God this morning. And I pray, Lord, for those struggling, those that, are, that have needs and burdens and, and, and just all kind of stuff going on in their life this day and hour. I pray, God, that you would uh, help us this morning. Lord, that you get honor and glory, and we'll ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. I, I'm, I'm just thankful as a child of God that if you look at those verses, at first he says, come. Let me, let me just say this right off the bat. If we don't come to him, we, we probably ain't going to get no help. Yep. Amen. Amen. He, 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 he starts it out saying, come unto me. And there ain't nothing wrong in people in therapy and, and there's nothing wrong with that. You need that. And, 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 and I've even been to some of that in my life. But there, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with, with going to your friends and going to your spouse and going to people that you trust. There, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But Jesus said, come unto me. Amen. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will. I like that, I will. Not that I might, not, not it, it, this, on, on a good day. He, he said, I will give you rest. But there's another command that's given there. He said, take. After we come to him, we have to take his, his yoke. Amen. Not, not my yoke, not, not anybody's yoke, but take his, his yoke. Upon you. And then he says, we often miss this one too. He says, learn of me. A lot of times we, we struggle in, in our everyday life because we're coming to him and we're, we, we want to take what he's got, but we're not learning what we should do. He says, for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest for your souls. I, I like that shall again. He says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. How many ever heard people say, well, uh, it's just real, real hard to live a Christian life. I'm guilty of saying it myself. Oh, this is just rough. This is so this is so hard. But Jesus said, "For my yoke is easy, Amen. <laughs> and my burden is hard, is heavy." He said, and my burden is light. Amen. So I encourage you before we ever get into the message this morning, whatever you need, he says, come to me. Take my yoke and learn 
of me. And when we do that, y'all, it'll be easier. It'll be a lot lighter on us, amen. And I believe you'd all agree with me this morning in, in this world that, that we live in today, it does not take long for, for us to get slammed. Uh, and I, I, that's just the, that's how life is. It slams us with issues on a daily basis. And it, it, it don't take long for, for the devil and this world and, and uh, let's not forget this flesh. It, 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 it slithers in on us and, and whispers these things in our ear. I don't know if the devil will whisper stuff in your ear like he does mine. I, I'm positive he does. If you say it, he does. He, he, he puts this stuff in our mind and, 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 and he tries to discourage us from coming unto him and, and in taking his yoke and he gets us focused on the problem at hand or, or the issue at hand and we get so distracted we, we forget or we just don't come to him. It don't take long. And we go from being up on this mountaintop serving Jesus with everything we have to, to, to all of a sudden it's like we're laying flat of our back in a valley somewhere wondering how in the world did I get here? Because yesterday I was, woo! Oh, how I love Jesus. And then today it's, I can't even function hardly but we, we wonder how we get there how, how can I say from experience this morning it's not always those sudden things that happen in our lives from where we go from from being at the top to, to, to so quickly, uh, falling in, in, in this valley that it's not those times that really affect us as badly as those things that sometimes that they 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 hang around in our lives on on a on a daily basis or or on, on a weekly basis or I'll even go as far to say there's some things in our lives that that have been hanging around for years yeah. that we just can't seem to come to him with. We don't. We don't want to. Or those things that have just been going on crazy for months in our life. That thing that has has, has taken over. Amen. Amen. Anybody ever had something just? get so burdensome to you or, or so uh, had you so drawn in that it just consumed everything that you done. Yep. Amen. I have. Yep. It, it takes over our life. It consumes us and before long it that thing, whatever it is, it becomes normal. Mm -hmm. That's right. It, it's like it's it's a burden, but it's been a burden so long. It's just, it's just there. It's just the way it is. We learn to live with it. We, we learn that this is our life. You, you've tried everything you know to do, and you've labored, and, and you've worked so hard, and whatever it is, but still, it's heavy laden on us. You prayed about it but you still can't find any rest. You can't, you can't find any peace for your soul. I've, I've had things like that in my life. And I'd like to try to help us this morning with some things that are maybe that you have something in your life that's been weighing on you heavily today or perhaps a long, long time been weighing on you. And I, I want to preach on that thought this morning. Just bring it all to him. Just bring it all to him. And I know saying that statement, it, it, it's, it sounds easy. It sounds like, well, that's easy for you to stand up there and preach, preacher. To, to bring, you, you don't, 
You may be saying you have no idea, Pastor, what you're asking me to bring to him. You have no idea the burden that, that is on my heart or the things that's nagging me or, or whatever it is that has you heavy laden today. You say, Pastor, you have no idea. And I probably don't. I probably don't. But Jesus said in our text, he said, come unto me. I'm not asking you to bring it to me. Because I, like I said, I probably don't understand. I probably have not been where you are. But he has. Yep. At all points, he was tempted Amen. as you and I. Yep. Whatever it is, he has experienced it when he walked this earth. And that's why he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's saying, bring it all to me. Bring it all to me. He's telling us, hey, whatever it is, bring it all to the table. Mm -hmm. And I like that song. There is a seat at that table for me. And there is a seat at his table for you. Amen. Amen. Whatever it is that you've been laboring or in or whatever it is that's heavily pressing on you today, you do not, listen to me, you do not have to leave here today You come in like this. You come in just weighted down and heavy laden. And y'all, some of us been talking this around for years. And I tell you what we do. We come to him. We'll lay it down right here. We'll lay it down and say, y'all, this thing's so heavy. I'm leaving it with you. I can't handle this no more. So and so in my life is this or whatever it may be. Yep. Yep. That's exactly right. We get up and we carry it right back Amen. with us. That's not what he's talking about when he says, come unto me. And leave it. What we're telling him. When we come to him. And we do that. We say Lord. I need help with this. But I'm going to. Do it on my own. Mm. You don't have to leave here today. Carrying whatever it is you brought in. Right. You don't have to. I want you to notice with me just a few things this morning. That we need to bring to him. Topical message. But I think it will be helpful to us today. Number one, if you're going to take notes this morning. We need to bring our sorrow to him. Our sorrow to him in your Bible or your device. Look at 1 Samuel chapter number 1. 1 Samuel chapter number 1. And verse number 5. The Bible says this, but Hannah, mm -hmm. he gave a worthy portion for he loved Hannah. Talking about her husband. But the Lord had shut up her womb. She couldn't have babies, y'all. And her adversary also provoked her sore. Let me just say this. There's a lot of times that whatever we're facing, our burden, our sorrow, there's going to be an adversary that says, pokes you, 
This happened to her year after year after year. She couldn't have children, but the other lady could. Her adversary could. And she rubbed it in every year. It says it also provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up into the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore she wept. She was sorrowful. Mm -hmm. When we have sorrow in our heart over something, we cry. We weep. And a lot of times we can't help it. We can't, we can't hold it back. And I, I, I see Hannah here wanting something so bad from the Lord. She brings her sorrow to him. Y'all, Hannah was so sorrowful in her spirit because she wanted a child and the Lord had shut up her womb. She was barren. And she could not have that child. The Bible even says in verse 6, her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret. She was bitter, y'all. <laughs> Hannah was bitter about her being barren. It also says that she wept. It even says she didn't. She was so sorrowful, y'all, that she didn't eat. How many of us had a burden so bad you couldn't even eat? Amen. She was broken. But look what she did about it. <laughs> look what she did about it, verse 10. It says, and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. She simply brought it all to him. That's what she did. Look at verse 11. And she bowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou would indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and forget not thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. And it shall come to pass as she continued praying before the Lord. Amen. <laughs> that Eli marked her mouth. So y'all, this is what's happening. She's so broken. She's so sorrowful. She finally says, I can't handle this anymore. I'm taking it all. I'm bringing it all to the Lord. She gets in an altar and starts crying out to God. She's not doing it verbally. Nobody can't hear anything. Nobody knows her burden. But Eli's sitting there watching her. And Eli said to her, how long will thou be drunk and let me say, a lot of people will mistake your burden. Mm -hmm. They don't understand. Yeah. He didn't understand her burden. He said, put away that wine from thee. She was so sorrowful, y'all. She was in such a way. She was so broken. She was, I'm talking about, she was just so sorrowful. He thought something was wrong. He thought she was impaired, y'all. Verse 15, it says, And Hannah answered him, No, my Lord, I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have not drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Amen. She brought it. Everything to him. And you listen to what I'm about to say. When she was willing to bring it all to him, Y'all, it says that she had done this year after year after year. But I don't 
think she was bringing it all to him. But this particular time, she made it up in her mind. She was done with the burden that she was carrying. She was willing to bring it on. Watch verse 18. And it says, and, and she said, let thy handmaiden find grace in thy sight. So the, the woman went her way and did eat. Y'all remember, she, she, she was so broken, she wasn't eating. And it says, and her countenance was no more sad. When she brought it all to him, when she left it all on the table for the Lord to take care of, she got up. She went and got her a Big Mac and some French fries. <laughs> Amen. And she had a smile on her face. Amen. She didn't look like she'd been eating persimmons and sucking on lemons anymore. She left it with him Amen. and said, Lord, it's all yours. Y'all y'all know if you get hot McDonald's fries, they're going to make you smile. Amen. <laughs> Today would be a great day to just bring it all Amen. to him. Amen. But number two, we need to bring all our shame to him. Don't, don't get upset with me right here, but our problem today is we're not ashamed of our sin anymore. Amen. That's right. We're not ashamed of it. Amen. I don't know about you this morning, but I've done some things in my life that, are, that I'm pretty ashamed of. They're, they're shameful. Amen. And let me just hit it hard right here. Even since I've been saved. I've done enough since I've been saved for God to say, I'm done with you, buddy. Enough to, to I ought to go to hell for it. But in our day and hour, we just, we're not ashamed of it anymore. But I, I thank God today, amen, I don't have to stay that way. I like what Isaiah said in chapter 50 and verse 7. He said, for the Lord God will help me. Therefore, shall I not be confounded. And I looked that word confounded up. It means I shall not be ashamed or humiliated. He says, therefore, I have set my face like a flint. And I know that I shall not be ashamed. Those sins that, that, that I'm ashamed of and I should be ashamed of, I need to bring them all to Him. And when I come to, to Him with these shameful things that I've sinned in my life, and I bring it all to Him, when I get up, I don't no need more to be ashamed of them anymore. Yep. If I leave them with Him, I don't know, y'all, if I'm the only one that's ever done something shameful that I'm like, oh, my word. I cannot believe that I just done that. God, forgive me. And a lot of times, just like the chair, We'll ask God to forgive us. And he does. Yep. But we carry it right on back out with us. Mm -hmm. And we let the devil, the accuser of the brethren, say, Psst. you remember when you done X, Y, Z? Yeah. And you say, yeah, I remember. He forgives us. Mm -hmm. But we don't forgive ourselves. He said, I know that I shall not be ashamed. You listen to the preacher this morning. There, there's not, 
a sin too shameful that God cannot forgive you and I. There's no sin too shameful. The drunk, the homosexual, the liar, the thief, no matter what we've done today, no matter where I've been today, no, no matter how shameful it is, with glory, y'all, I don't have to be ashamed of it. Amen. The devil oftentimes throws up your past just remind him of his future. Because you know where he's going. I've read the back of the book, y'all. I wish he'd let me go. Boom! And kick him off in there. And say, we just forgive ourselves. We can bring that shame to Him. He wants us to bring that shame to Him. Get it out of the blood of Jesus Christ. He forgives us. Forgive yourself. We serve a God, y'all, that'll take away all shame. He'll take, He'll take the blackest of hearts Wash it real good in some red blood. Amen. Amen. And it comes out as white as snow. Amen. And he says, what sin are you talking about? That's yeah. right. Amen. I don't remember them anymore. As far as the east is from the west. That helps me. Because you have no idea how wicked this is. Amen. Right. The psalmist said, Let not me be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Amen. What about you, friend? Do you, do you have something shameful in your life? Just just bring it all to him. Not only our sorrow and our shame. We don't like this one right here, y'all, but we, we need to bring our selfishness to him. Don't, don't, don't miss this one, y'all. Don't miss it. Because we live in a day... We're selfish. I understand it. We living in the Laodicean church age. Laodicea, you look it up, it means rights of the people. Civil rights. I deserve this. I, I, you owe me. Is that not where we're at? We're living exactly in the last days, the last church age of selfishness. Luke chapter 9, verse 23 and 24, Jesus said, if. If you write in your Bible, you go to Luke 9, verse 23, and you go to that little word, if, and you circle it, you highlight it. He says, if. It's a condition, y'all. It's conditional. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross when he feels like it. <laughs> no. Let him take up his cross on Friday. No. He said let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, then, let me read that right, my sake, the same shall save it. Let me ask you, sir, let me ask you, ma'am, are you walking with the Lord and denying 
yourself. I told you we wasn't going to like this one. And if we be honest, they don't, none of us like it. Are, are, are we fulfilling the desire of God to be more like Jesus? That's what we're supposed to do. To be more like Christ. Mm -hmm. Or are, are we being drug around by this world in our selfishness pleasing me? And I'll just shoot you straight. They some days that's who I try to please is me. Amen. Y'all, are you listening? Nobody likes you or me. Nobody likes me better than me. And nobody likes you better than you. Your flesh, listen to me. Your flesh will always, always, always choose itself. Yep. When given the option my flesh will always choose me over anybody or anything. Amen. Amen. Why? Because it's selfish. Amen. The only way you'll ever deny your flesh and yourself is to bring it all to him. That's the only way. To crucify your flesh and walk in the spirit of God. Amen. Galatians 5 and 16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Let me read that again. So that ye cannot do the things that ye, ye would. What Paul say in, in, in Oconee County language, he said, those things that I want to do, I don't do. <laughs> he, he, his flesh wants to do this. He says, but I can't do that. My spirit wants me to do this. It was a battle. It was two bulldogs, y'all, fighting each other. And whichever one we feed is the one that's going to win. When I feed my spirit, Because they lust us. Y'all think about a dog fight. Y'all put two, two dogs up together. The weakest dog's going to lose. Every time. Yeah. Bring it all to him. It's the cure for selfishness. But lastly this morning. We need to bring. Number four. All our sickness to him. Flip over to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Verse 25, the Bible says, A certain woman which had an issue, <laughs> that's another message for another time, but <laughs> how many in here has got issues? <laughs> Me. I have issues. But a certain woman which had issue, an issue of blood for 12 years. There's them years again, y'all. Over and over. A sickness is what she had. And had suffered many things of many physicians. And had spent all she had and was nothing better. But rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Came into the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all, this woman had this issue for 12 years. She did everything she knew to do to fix her sickness. She suffered. In all kinds of ways, she suffered. She spent everything she had, every last red cent she spent. 
but she just got sicker. Now, I, I couldn't help but think right here about my own life as a lost sinner. I, listen to me. I tried everything I knew to fix my sin. I tried everything to, to cover it up, to hide it. I tried to drink it away. I tried to medicate it away. Amen. I tried to even act like it was not even there. And I suffered many things because of it. I dealt. When we got sin in our life, y'all, when we got that sickness of sin, we're going to deal with it. Like I said, I, I tried to deal with it that way. I tried to numb it out. I tried to say, well, I, I, I'm a pretty good feller. I'm all right. I act like it wasn't there. Instead, I, what I done was swept it under the rug, as they say. Put the rug back down. You can't see it. But it cost me way more than I wanted to pay, y'all. And it got worse and worse and worse. Let me say, hear me well. If we messing around with sin, you better bring it all to him today. Because it will cost you more than you want to pay. More than you're willing to pay. Romans 6 and 23 said, For the wages of sin is death. It'll kill you spiritually. We're talking spiritually. If we have sin in our life, believer, I'm to, let's talk to the believer. 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sin... Our sickness. That's what sin is. A sickness. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lost sinner. Romans 3.23 says. For all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. Amen. What a good glad day. Romans 10 and 13. Settled in my heart. <laughs> It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it's that simple, y'all. It is that simple. Yeah. It's, you ain't even got to get an altar to do it. You can do it. I've done it in a, a 14 by 52 trailer on a Wednesday night. With no preacher, no nothing. It was the Holy Ghost of God and the Word of God. And I said, Lord, I brought it all to him that night. I said, I don't know if you can do anything with this. I was messed up, y'all. But I put my faith and trust in him that night. Amen. Repented of my sin and went a different direction. Amen. Amen. All you got to do is bring it all to him this morning. What, what is it? I'm closing right here. What is it today that you, not, not your neighbor, not your wife, not your husband, not your child, not your mama, not your daddy, not your granny. What is it that you, I can't help but think about Isaac and Abraham. God told Abraham, you take your boy, your only boy, up on Mount Moriah, and you kill him. I don't know about you, but if God told me to take my boy up on Mount Moriah and kill him, I'd have a hard time with that. Abraham got up there, laid that boy on that side, had him bound, Fixing to put a knife in it. God said, Come out! 
right over here to your sacrifice. Amen. Amen. I said that to say this. God didn't want Isaac. Yeah, that's right. He was after Abraham. Mm -hmm. He was after Abraham. And he's after you mm -hmm. this morning. Mm -hmm. He ain't after the person beside you. Is your heart beating out of your chest? That's God saying, hey. Amen. I love you. What is it today you need to bring in him? Because he wants you to bring it all to him. Your sorrow, your shame, your selfishness, <laughs> your sickness, whether it be physical or spiritual. If you need to come, this altar is open this morning. You just mind the Lord.